welcome back to another lecture wrap up video series. This is on lecture number 12, again from Engineering 17, Section 2, here spring quarter at UC Davis. So in today's lecture, or lecture 12, um, we covered uh, more about RLC circuits. Okay, so we not only covered uh, now looking at the step response for the parallel RLC circuits, but also got into the response from series RLC circuits, just a slight variation. Um, and so just to, in regards to the last uh, wrap up video, when we talked about, when we started about with RLC circuits in parallel, that was the natural response. So with the step response, again, step response meaning the response of the circuit after I'm connecting it to some given source. So in this case, as shown here, if I have this switch initially closed, I'm shorting out this current source. So I have whatever the steady state initial condition of just this par uh, parallel combination of RLC circuit elements is. But then at some time T0, I open that switch, thereby connecting this current source up to the rest of my circuit elements, and there will be some response to follow. So we came up with writing initially again the, the differential equation that describes the response of this given circuit. And this, uh, the left side of this equation looks very similar to what we saw previously with the natural response case from last lecture. But the difference though is that because we have this given source that's sitting in our circuit, uh, this total response on the left side of the equation now is, has to be equal to some uh, constant term here, in this case I over LC, uh, whereas previously there was, this was simply zero, and so the differential equation uh, solved out a little bit differently. So there was a, a variety of ways we went through in, in figuring out the actual solution to this different second order differential equation. But in general, we found that the, the final form of the answer uh, took this shape, such that the current was simply equal to whatever the final current IF would have been. So like in this case, if I just had a current source connected to my uh, uh, sources here, and I was looking specifically for the current through my inductor, then I would know that my IF value was whatever the value of this current source was. Okay, so it would be that, plus then the function of the f uh, for the natural response, okay? So I, if I go back, um, and that's just basically if I had this uh, equation equal to zero, and I, we come up with those solutions prior, again, for the three different cases, overdamped, underdamped, and critically damped, I can plug that right in here and simply add that to whatever my final uh, value would be for my current, or very similarly, if I was looking at a voltage, say, across the capacitor with respect to time, the final voltage across the capacitor plus whatever that function for the natural response ended up being, and that took this very same form. Okay, so then moving on to series RLC circuits, uh, something, uh, now we've covered both the um, uh, natural response and then the step response case here. Just note that right there. Um, okay, so again, nat natural response case meaning we want to know what, what is happening with the current or voltage with respect to time after we've taken the sources out of the given system and are left with some in presumably stored energy in our inductor and or our capacitor. And so the, the solutions here looked, uh, again, similar to what we'd seen prior with the parallel case in that just looking at this one solution for the overdamped response case with I of T is A1 times exponential S1 uh, to the exponential S1 times T plus A2 times exponential uh, S2T. Now the only difference though is that these roots uh, S1 and S2 are slightly different in the series case Specifically, this alpha term, which is that Nipper frequency, is now R over 2L. Okay, so this is a different now specific to the uh, RLC in series case, whereas in parallel it was a different quantity. The omega naught value, though, is the same as you see here, and the actual roots, as it, as it were written out, is still the same, uh, except for the fact that the alpha is now a little bit different. Okay, so these were not uh, too much uh, different from what we had seen with the parallel case, uh, just accounting for this primary effect here. And again, you still have to make the comparison between omega naught and alpha in order to determine which of the three different um, conditions you'll be working under, and then you'll have to work with that specific solution. So I, again, I have not written all of those out explicitly here. Now for the step response case, again, this was the, would be the case 
very similar to what I just described with the parallel circuit case. If we have the RLC in series, sometime T0, I could connect up some given uh, source, some battery source here, okay? And as we see here, as we just said, again, very similar to what we saw for the parallel case, that in, in the specific condition of the over, over damped case, uh, let's say the voltage across the capacitor would look at whatever the uh, final voltage was, which in this case would simply be that I'm dropping all the voltage from the source across my capacitor once everything's settled out, plus the same form of the natural response, A1 times exponential S1T plus A2 times exponential S2T. So it's the very same form as what's shown here. Now the only difference though is that this A1 and A2 terms are not the exact same A1 and A2 that I would get from the natural response case. So these have to be evaluated specific to um, the circuit as is shown here, whatever the initial conditions are when I initially connect up this source. Whereas this A1 and A2 here, and, that, and that, sorry, this is why I've notated these as the primes. Whereas this A1 and A2 up here are based on the initial conditions of my RLC circuit after I've disconnected it from a given source. So you just want to pay attention to you know where you, where you get the A1 and A2 terms. And again, these uh, from last uh, video, these come from the initial, uh, let's say voltage and the change of voltage, the DVDT at time zero plus immediately after whatever change has happened has happened. You need to look at those values and then that will allow you to figure out what the A1 prime and A1 two prime are. Okay, so this basically covers then the final uh, parts of RLC circuits. We've looked at both the uh, parallel circuit combinations, series circuit combinations, as well as natural response and step response for each of those. And this kind of wraps up this uh, part of the uh, of looking at the various RLC circuit circuits. Next time we'll be getting into more uh, sinusoidal sources and working on to a, a new section of the class. So hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time. As always, stay classy.